video here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a gluten-free pizza dough, which is nice and crusty outside and soft inside. And it's definitely up to par with its glutinous cousins and will fool most people to think it's the real deal. But will it fool an Italian to think that's the real deal? I'm not going to take on that challenge. My New Year resolution are 30 days of no sugar, so you're not going to get any cake recipes, and more exercise, just like last year. And I'm going to work on my diet. I'm going to make a gluten-free pizza dough. It has some veg, tomatoes, and it has cheese, which has a lot of calcium and makes super strong bones. And it has no added sugar. And you can exercise when you make the pizza. It's very good for upper body movements. So let's get started with my New Year's resolutions. To get started on the pizza dough, you want to add 60 gram, which is a quarter cup and two tablespoons of psyllium husk to a small bowl and add 360 milliliters or one and a half cup of water to it. The husk will absorb all the liquid and will form with the water a gel. This makes the dough so much more elastic and allows the yeast to expand and rise much better than without it. So give the husk and the water a good steer and set it aside for five minutes until it formed a gel. I'm gonna set up the yeast now. So I'm gonna add around 120 milliliters or half a cup of warm water. When I talk about warm, we're talking about body temperature. So around 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. Make sure it's under 50 degrees Celsius because otherwise the yeast gets killed. And yeast loves sugar. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons of sugar I'm going to steer the solution until the sugar is almost dissolved. I'm going to add now two teaspoons of dry yeast. Just make sure it's gluten-free. And give that again a steer. The room temperature is pretty low right now and, and will take the yeast forever to rise. So I'm going to help out those little bugs and I'm going to place the bowl with the yeast and the water into a deep conditioning hair cap, which is normally around 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna let the yeast do its thing and wait for five to 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna mix the flour combo. I'm gonna use 100 grams, which is two thirds cups and two tablespoons of Millet flour, 120 gram of white rice flour, which is three quarter cup, cornstarch, which is 120 gram or three quarter cup, tapioca starch, 100 grams, which is also three quarter cup, and 40 grams, which is a quarter cup of potato flour, which is dehydrated potatoes. I'm gonna add the Fisillium husk gel to the flowers. And I'm gonna check on my yeast lid. So I'm gonna open up the heating cap and check if I see bubbles on the top of my water. If so, we know the yeasting has been starting to eat the sugars and started to react. I'm gonna pour the yeast in the water to the flowers. I'm gonna start mixing the dough with the spatula and start kneading it with my hands. It should be a pretty sticky dough. If the dough is too dry, add one tablespoon at a time of water to it until it becomes a sticky dough. Since the dough doesn't have any gluten, you don't have to knead it like regular dough for hours. You just need to have it well combined. It's now time for some private time for the yeast and the flour. So back into the heating cap, closing it off, placing a tea towel over it and giving it some privacy for about two hours. I want the yeast to be about double its size. So now the yeast needs to rise and do its thing. So it needs to stay at its warm place, just like our cat. And then in two hours, we can roll it out. The dough, not the cat. So we have two hours to do some quality workout. So we're gonna bake the pizza in our cast iron pan because it holds heat so much better than a regular baking sheet or baking pan. So it's really, really hot. So make sure you don't burn yourself. And the other cool thing about a cast iron pan is you can use it for exercise because it's really heavy. After one and a half hours and 30 minutes more to go, I want to heat up my cast iron pan at the top of the stove. It may take like three to five minutes to get it really hot. I'm going to place it then into the oven so it starts emitting heat and that will later create this really beautiful pizza crust. After two hours I'm checking on my yeast dough and it was nicely rising to double of its size. I'm going to sprinkle some white rice flour on the top of the table and remove the yeast dough out of its bowl. And I knead the dough until it's nice and smooth. And check it out, the dough stretches! And I can even toss it! But where did it go? Okay Mika, give the dough back! Just before I'm ready to roll it out, I'm gonna add one and a half tablespoon of olive oil 
and knead it into the dough to give it a nice golden crust and add that nice olive flavor to it. To roll out the dough, I'm going to flatten the dough with my hand and then going to use the rolling pin to get it thinner. I want it about a quarter inch or half a centimeter thick. I'm going to then also with my hand stretch the dough out a little bit more because yeah, it is a stretchy dough. I'm going to grab my hot cast iron pan out of the oven and place my dough in the center of it. I'm going to add one to two tablespoons of my favorite pizza sauce and sprinkle a generous handful of grated mozzarella cheese on the top of the pizza. Now the cast iron pan gets back into the oven for 10 more minutes. I'm also going to roll out the pizza and put it on a regular baking sheet just to see if there's any crust differences. I want to bake my pizza at the highest temperature possible. In this case, it's 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. Now, in an ideal case, you have a pizza oven which gets to 700 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, given that I don't have that, I'm going to bake it at the regular temperature or my max I can get, and I'm going to bake it for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes in the oven, you smell the cheese and the tomato and your pizza is ready. So I want to have a look at the pizza crust, which I baked in the cast iron pan. And it turned out pretty nice. You can see some of the burn marks and it's a pretty strong crust. And when I bite into it, it's soft and chewy. Maybe also a bit hot. In comparison, this is the pizza I baked onto the baking sheet and you can see how the outside got a little bit brown but the inside is very soft and flabby. So definitely cast iron pan. And I hope you're gonna try out making this gluten-free pizza recipe and have some fun with it. I mean, we can't travel right now and maybe we can at least travel in our minds and in our experience at home to figure out how it might be right now sitting somewhere warm in Italy Yes, I miss it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, give me thumbs up, add some comments, thoughts, feedbacks, and I see you next week. Oh, and check the bell to get notifications about upcoming videos.